Hi everyone, hope you good. I want to share with you today five tips for scoring to a film. Actually, they're not just tips, but let's say my own personal takes about how composing for a film is by no means different from say writing just a song or um, any music which exists just by itself, you know. And I'm doing that by referencing to the music I've just recently uh, scored for the um, West War uh, scoring competition. You can take a listen to the whole queue uh, by clicking uh, in the link here below, here, here. Oh, by the way, the competition is closing on next Wednesday, 3rd of June. So if you're interested, you may still apply. So let's begin with the first step. First and foremost, we should always remember that film music is equal to applied music, specifically a music uh, which has to be applied to film, to movie. Uh, the statement seems uh, to be pretty much self-explanatory, right? <laughs> but let's try to grasp the full meaning out of it. Um, in other words, that means when we are at the stage of starting to write a music for a film, we should think ourselves more as a tailor than a composer, you know, just not to say a slave. Um, you have to create the most suitable dress for that movie, that cue, uh, for those images, uh, people will watch the movie primarily. We don't watch a movie in order to listen to the music usually. Images come before sound and so should be our music, not too much invasive. I would say, if I may, your ego should have been forgotten on the spot. Well, probably, as you can tell, if you listen to this cue of mine, um, I have actually ignored this first tape in it. I mean, this music definitely is, does not go under the scene. It has a clear and fashionable, I guess, theme. Uh, it's not sound design. Well, it's a car chase scene. So, um, really, it was not intended for underscoring, you know, with lots of dialogues and intimate soft background noises and, and, and so on. Yet, I think um, the watchers are gonna be attracted more by the music than by the scene itself, you know. And usually this is not considered to be a good point. I mean, if you find yourself paying more attention to the music than the film itself, well, that could be a problem. Uh, I'll let you listen to the main theme now. Uh, for the sake of all disclosures, I can assure you this queue won't be the winner of the Westworld competition. Mainly for that reason, I know I have exceeded so much with my ego here. But whatever, I've never taken this challenge just uh, with the only purpose to win. It has been actually an amazing opportunity to write some music on a high quality AAA uh, movie sequence like that which I would never had the chance, I guess, to approach. Anyway, this Taylor tip ties in directly with tip number two. In your opinion, generally, what makes for a good film music, a beautiful music, a memorable tune, maybe? Well, it could be not necessarily beautiful or the most amazing piece of music you've ever written, but uh, it is strongly recommended that your music fits effectively on the images it refers to. Uh, it has to fulfill not your purposes and aesthetics, but the ones of the director and the spotty notes. So sometimes we tend to do just too much. I mean, write complex music structures, put in too many instruments, you know, add in, add in, just keep it on adding uh, with a sort of horror vacui, hoping our music um, in the end will be better just because uh, we've inserted another line of strings or whatever. So I don't want you to do this. We want instead to do less or not. Actually, this is a pretty ambiguous topic. I would say doing less is not enough. Less, more or whatever. Uh, we should do exactly what is supposed to be uh, effective 
for the scene. I think I didn't respect even this uh, tip in my composition. I mean, there are probably too many sounds, just too much music, uh, I must confess. And you'll end up um, losing your attention on the film, being attracted by the music once again. I mean, I'm not saying it's all uh, rubbish here, but, uh, you know, there are out there many scores which are really minimal and, I guess, more effective than uh, this one of mine. I just want to let you hear uh, this part. Is that a standard issue? No, it's not. Yeah, the music uh, is brought down because there are some kind of dialogues. But it's still full of effects. Point shoot. Uh, voices. Like this one. It's a choir. Oh, it's not, really, it's not minimal, it's not sound design. Police ahead. Maintain speed. Listen to that. Orchestral cue. Too much music for ground. Tip number three. Think modal. Pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, if you want to sound modern, not expected nor predictable, you'll find much help in the modal harmony. You should study this kind of harmony. Um, it is used not only in some specific music genres like jazz, but widely exploited in film music as well, really. That's probably one of the main reasons why film music compositions uh, could be a bit easier, uh, like, say, a standard traditional classical academic one. I mean, when writing for a movie, you're not following strict musical rules, forms or structures, but you are driven instead um, primarily by the narrative elements of the film. So who cares? Who cares if you're not writing on perfect modulation patterns or you're not respecting the structure of the symphony or you're not ending with a final harmonic pedal and so on. It just doesn't matter at all. Or you could be John Williams. Let's say you are a bit more free from a mere musical point of view, but heavily, still heavily linked to the movie instead. You'll often find yourself to make your music change, even drastically change, from one bar to another bar. Because, you know, um, the scenes, the images of the movie are developing, and modal harmony, uh, more than the tonal one probably, sets you free exactly to operate these changes also um, in a fancy way. For instance, I found that pretty much um, every entry I've listened to uh, in this Westworld comp competition challenge are based on the same tonal tonality from beginning till the end. No harmonic uh, changes at all. I've made up uh, to insert uh, instead a few more steps every now and then, just to, you know, uh, have a general catchy sound, I guess. So I'll let you hear this uh, few changes uh, in a model harmony I made. So all the, um, the composition starts in C minor. Jump here. Run speed, go. C minor, then uh, it moves to D minor, now, and it's then it uh, goes to uh, E flat minor here, so C minor, D minor, flat minor. Then when the, uh, the scene changes, 
it goes to F sharp minor. Here, F sharp minor. It stays F sharp. Even here. Even here. Sharp. In the end. There's uh, return uh, of this E flat minor harmony. Tip number four. Um, one of the first things I always do when you know approaching to new video or cue, well actually the very first thing at all is to find well um, what I feel is gonna be the best BPM, even the main tempo sequencer for the scene. Believe me, your workflow will say thanks to you and you'll find everything will be then much easier and fluid. If you miss the right BPM at the beginning, the search of it, I mean, uh, um, you may not have a happy marriage with it and it will eventually come up like a snowball effect. You know, always trying then to correct things, to change them, to rearrange. You better have just to think about it uh, just before anything else. For this cue, I have set up my uh, main BPM at uh, 134. Um, you know, there are some few, really few um, tempo changes here. It begins with 134, then goes to uh, 37, then come back here uh, 34. So let's say 135 on average. You know, uh, it's a car chasing uh, sequence, so uh, scenes changes very rapidly, cars are going fast, and my tempo is, uh, uh, you know, fast as well. Nothing less, nothing more. Very linear, I guess. So last step, probably the most advanced one. Try to respect everything we've said so far, but in the meantime, find your own sound trademark. In other words, you are subjected to the movie, the director, uh, the spotty note, and cool, uh, you're great, but you know, um, it's just your job after all. Uh, if you can even be original without breaking those rules, well, you're dope <laughs> and you're walking a step higher than anyone else indeed. On a pragmatic point of view, I suggest you create your own sound. Uh, don't rely just on sample libraries. You know, everyone is likely to have nowadays the same bunches of um, sample libraries you have, you better invest your time developing sounds which belong just to yourself. Again, this composition uh, is definitely not the best example at all, even for this tip. I've just used um, here a custom sound which I recorded really quickly from my guitar by plucking, you know, um, some strings in the very upper area uh, of my guitar neck, you know, where all the strings are uh, fixed. And I obtained this kind of weird pattern. So I plucked my the, the, the strings of my guitar neck, and this is the the sound design issue fact. Yeah, it's pretty ev ev it's pretty vo evocative, I guess, and adds a sort of sound design ish color to the scene. You know, it's it's the moment when the the guy here has this kind of weird moment. So in the context, um, with the other sounds, with the whole composition sounds like that. What's happening to him? Oh, I think he's switching genres. Yeah. So just to recap, be a tater, um, do less, think model, find the right BPM and nail your own sound. That's it. I hope you find this video helpful for you. Subscribe and that bell if you want to be notified next time I put a video up and I'll catch you next time. Take care.